Welcome everyone, happy Monday to Megabit. You will notice that I am not Peter Brown, and Tom McShay is not Peter Brown either. Peter Brown, what is he doing? He's in Fort Worth. He's in Fort Worth, Less. tending to uh, yeah. an extremely embarrassing foot fungus? Is that yeah. what you think, maybe? He's spreading barbecue on his foot fungus. Yeah, yeah. well that's what you do down in Fort Worth. So you know, if you guys want to send Peter Brown some well wishes on Twitter, I think that's at PC Brown. Tell him to get that barbecue sauce on his terrible foot fungus and feel better soon. Uh, today on Megabit, we just received a priority message from General Pepper because holy cow, we're playing Star Fox 64. The best Star Fox game. I know, right? Ever. This was oh, this is definitely one of my top ten favorite games of all time. Wow. Uh, it's not before. one of my top ten. Oh, what? Is this? But I played the heck out of it. Because you hate fun. What is this? March '97, <laughs> I think. Uh, so many great things, great memories. Yeah, I. It had Rumble. It was, it was voice acting. It came. Okay, you're stealing my. You okay. stole what I said. All right. I totally said that because it's like when I bought the game. I think it was February 90s, February and March of '97. When you buy it, it came with the Rumble Pack, mm -hmm. which had never before been seen in console games. And you plug it in. Revolutionary. And all of a sudden, your controller is shaking. Four and the there's full today. voice acting. And I know the, the people who had a PlayStation are like. <laughs> But, that was a big thing for the N64. Alright, well, let's, let's pause just a second. I want to hear this intro because I've got, I've got some issues with this game that we're going to touch on. Okay. It's important to get full backstory. There's no voice Five years here. later, <laughs> no, General no, Pepper noticed strange activity coming from Venom. He noticed a strange James activity. James McCloud, Pigma right. Dangar, and Peppy okay. Hare of the Star Since Fox the team check it out. were sent to investigate. Upon their arrival, Pigma betrayed the team, he's a and James and Pepe like were do. captured by Andros. Pigma betrayed the team. Pepe barely escaped Venom and returned home to tell James' son, Fox, about his father's fate. A few so years James have passed. Captured. Andros yes. has again invaded the Lilat system. Okay. And then a few years have passed. has turned to that. a new Star Fox team headed by Fox McCloud to save Corneria and free the Lilat system once again. Okay. General Pepper. It seems to me like he's really, really bad at his job. Because <laughs> he's got Wait, what, is his, what is his job? His job is he's a general. Okay, there we go. Just wanted to establish yeah, that. He's a general. He's got Andros. He's a, Andros is a bad dude. Evil scientist. Yeah. He's ruining everything for everybody. And it's so instead of up, like putting him in space prison or just executing him. Yeah. They're like, we're going to send him to the barren, deserted planet. It's both barren and deserted. We're going to send him to Venom. It's a completely empty, lifeless planet or whatever, and just let him live out his days. Did they give him like a carton of water? I. They must have, because five years later, they get a call on the space phone that's like, oh, there's weird activity coming from that planet that you sent the evil scientist to uh. all by himself. And what does Pepper do? He's like, huh. Well, you know, Andros did kind of ruin everything for everybody before, but I'm not going to send any of my people to, like, go check it out or mobilize the military or do, like, a formal investigation. We'll just hire some mercenaries. We'll get a, that PMC team, Star Fox. We'll send them down there just to go poke around, make sure everything's okay. Three ships. Three ships. We'll send three ships. They send them down And there. one of those ships, we should point out, is being piloted by a rabbit. By a rabbit and a pig, which... I don't know about you, but pigs and spaceships. I don't get it. I mean, what? foxes, I, yeah. Yeah. They're clever. Because they're, they're cool dudes, yeah. They can figure it out. But they send them down there to go check it out. James gets captured, and then Peppy does nothing, presumably. It's just, it just cuts to a few years later. Like, he yeah, got captured, in and he was like, oh, well, I guess that's too bad. Huh. Was he even, like, strategizing? Because he still just sends, well, this time it's four ships. I guess he learned his lesson. Is oh, no, no, he doesn't today? learn his lesson. He doesn't do anything because But he sends four ships this time. No, he way doesn't, more. He, you're getting ahead of yourself here because what happens is, so a few years later, boom, Andros invades. Just boom. And presumably catching everyone completely off guard because by the time General Pepper decides to call in the new Star Fox team, yeah, as you can see, the enemies are at the gates. Rome is falling before our eyes. His, the entire universe is coming apart under Andros' invasion. And only now does General Pepper decide to lift the finger and make a phone call in Star Fox. That's all I'm saying. Plus, he's got all these pictures of himself up over all the buildings. What's up with that? It's a little big brother. I know, right? Little big brother. He's got a little bit of an ego problem. Little so, bit. That's just, I've just got some beef with General Pepper. 
He's not. He's not. He's not the best general. He's not. How the was best he general. general for all these years, also? <laughs> I know, did he make the rank of general, like, when he was super young? So also... He's just been general forever. Like, I don't want to spoil anything, but... <laughs> you, yeah, no spoilers. you saved the day. Oh, yeah. You totally do. He's gonna so get far. credit for that! He is gonna get credit for it, however, you do bill him for your services. At the end of the game. Yeah, but he's gonna, he's gonna keep being... <laughs> the general! Cause he, cause, and then, then that's it, he's just gonna go on forever. I know, right? And then he's gonna make some other terrible mistake. Also, why is... It put the rest of the system in danger. I didn't realize that Fox is a mercenary. Yeah. He's, he's, he's like no better than... Oh, no! I missed my bomb. That's not good. This is not a new record run. No, this is not a new record run at all. You... Let Falco Flacco, go Falco died? Flacco! Flacco. That means we don't get to take the bomb with you, but oh well. So I've got the strategy guide there, Tom. Why don't you read us a little bit? Because the strategy guide is full of fascinating... It's Star got Fox information. Well, as, as the back says, it doesn't. This doesn't just have multiplayer tactics. It has hot multiplayer tactics. Oh, hot multiplayer tactics. That's my favorite kind. It of has a. Uh, it also has a puzzle that or post that you haven't taken out yet. Well, I don't want to ruin it. Ruin so we're. Of the I don't even know why I'm going on all the loops. Falk is dead. Oh my god. Well, he's temporarily dead. You've lost. You've lost your will. He had to back off. So this is the temperate world of Corneria. Yes. And it's known as the Jewel of the Lilat system. Oh, really? Lilat, of course, is... I mean, this game's called Lilat Wars in, mm -hmm. in the Europe, right? Yes, because we are in the Lilat system. Yeah. Fighting a war. <laughs> yeah. That could have been easily prevented at so many different turns, but oh well. And people in, in Europe are like, Foxes shouldn't be in the star. <laughs> So they don't want to... Yeah, nobody wants to play a game called Star Fox. That makes no logical sense. No sense. I'm not going to shoot at it. Though. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Because that's, that's always the first thing that happens to this dude. So this, dude, his, like, shot out. this dude's name is Garudas. Unless he proves to be a big fan of his life. Okay, so I will shoot at his life. Is this Garudas? Tell me about Garudas. Those who cross Andros will die. Those who cross Andros will die. Hey, yeah, maybe that isn't. It is Garudas. No, it isn't. Sorry, it's Granga. Granga? It was Granga. Granga is actually the little ape who drives the huge bot boss at the end of Route 1. That is actually what it says. He thinks that he's safe in the huge walker, <laughs> but the bot is one of the most vulnerable targets in the game. So that bot is more vulnerable than the normal... Than even the, the normal ship. Most the normal. vulnerable. That's a bold claim, Nintendo Power author. Of the strategy guide. This is the official strategy guide. It's more like no your joke. father. So before you were talking deep in the backstory. Deep in the backstory. Another thing I wanted to touch on, actually, just to quickly step on whatever point you were coming around to, yeah. is, so James gets captured by Andrew. Yes. Peppy barely escapes, flies back to Corneria. He's like, hey guys, everything went wrong. James got captured. Yeah. Star Fox takes over the team. And then what does he do? Where is Star Fox in those years after? Does he go to Venom to try to save his dad? Because it seems if he Impressive. went to Venom and got involved in the conflict early on, then it would have ruined a lot of Andross's plans because the R-Wings are so much more advanced than any other ship, apparently, in either military. Hmm. Um, but he's not there at, for the start of the war. In fact, he doesn't show up until the absolute very, like, almost the very end of the war. So where did he go? And why didn't he go look for his dad? Isn't he just a kid? I guess, but I mean, I always assumed that Fox was in, like he must have had some piloting training, because, uh, so he gets the news that his dad has been captured, and then a few years later, assume, has assumed control of Star Fox. So he must have already had some prior piloting experience. Well, maybe it's just nepotism. How do you mean? Well, it's your last black. name is Fox, and yeah. so is was James, and that's it. You're getting the team. <laughs> that's all it takes. That's all it takes. <laughs> but and we know that James is Fox's father because he calls him father at the end of the game when he has that vision of him. So, some more spoilers. So more basically, spoilers. he, through no skill of his own, but only because of nepotism, <laughs> assumes command of Star Fox. Takes control of Star Fox. And team. Peppy is... Which, honestly, control of Star Fox team probably should have gone to Peppy. Peppy has the most experience, um, and he was there on Venom when James got captured, so he knows like what Venom's like and what Andros is up Here to. Here comes a big one. 
So, but here, so here's here's my point. Okay, what do you got? So Peppy joins with him, knowing that he's not good, but having this loyalty to James, right? Right. right. Slippy joins Sense with him because Slippy is always the last kid picked in anything because he sucks at sure. everything. Probably. So he's like, yeah. hey, you actually want me? Whoa, oh, that join up. And then you're wondering, because Falco's legit, mm -hmm. why would he join up with this with this idiot dude? It's because he wants Use to take over. Oh no! Like he wants it's power play. Because he's like, I'll clearly show that I'm better than Fox and Cloud. Yeah. So that's that's how there's all these people in this group. Because yeah, they, all, they all have their reasons, and they're and not because he's good at being a pilot. I mean, Falco could also be there for the money. Well, he's a mercenary. He has a mercenary. And he knows that Cheryl will be better because Slippy's definitely going to That's die. right. Slippy is not going to be able to Old Man Peppy got lucky once. Yeah. And Old Man Peppy's on his last legs. And Fox is... Fox is the only competition. Well, he's banking on his father's name, not his own talent. <laughs> and his father didn't even do that well. That's true. His dad totally got captured. He squealed real good before oh. he died. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, this game's dark, by the way. So, too, basically... It gets dark later. Uh, Falco's... I mean, he's... This is also why he's he's better than Fox McCloud and Smash Brothers. True. Bold he's... claims. Well, that's just true. true so I think I think we just uncovered the secret of this franchise. This is like the, one of the, the few franchises the where the, the main character is not that good. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> or at least he's not supposed to. He's not, yeah, I guess that's it, isn't it? But I mean, going. I mean, we apparently we dissect the shooter too much. Okay, let's keep going. So there. So, so James. Of so James McCloud is just fun. Right. James McCloud is also a racer in F Zero. Oh no, that's right. You want to call that F Zero X and F Zero G X. The N sixty four and the GameCube ones. Yes. Both have a racer. Both have a racer named James McCloud. Now he's not a fox person. He's not a fox person. He's not a fox. He's a person person. But he's dressed he has, like James. He's got the green sort of military outfit. Yes, and his hair is, is sticks up the car. Right. And he pilots a race car that kind of looks like it could be an inspiration. So uh, our good friends at Game Trailers. Right. They do a series I really like called Pop Fiction. Are good and it's basically uh, Mythbusters for games. The yeah. But they they usually do things that are it. factual. You can also lock on the <laughs> Like, this did one. they... Are you saying this isn't factual? <laughs> That's usually what they do. Are you admitting that the James and F-Zero is not the same James? We'll get to that in a second. So Pop Fiction, it, it, it talks about things like, oh, there was, a, there was an Arabic-sounding chant in Ocarina of Time. Okay. And how did that get in there, and then what happened after? Sure. So that's like a real... Based on real life stuff. Answerable, concrete, yeah. and it's a really interesting show. But for some reason, the, the last episode was about, is James McCloud <laughs> is the same character in both games? And their evidence is fantastic, because in this game, you of course, uh, you go through black holes. Right. And one of the black holes you go warp through... Warp zones. It's a warp zone one. Yeah. One of those looks like it's just a dimension, dimension from hell. <laughs> so it kind of just shows that you, there is this ability to tra travel to different dimensions. Mm -hmm. So perhaps... Why not? Maybe James gets captured, escapes, Let's his ship is damaged, gone. gets lost, ends up in a black hole, and then winds up being a race car driver. Hey, good. Why not? Because when life gives you lemons, you make race car driver. You become a race car driver. And they and they pointed out that like the few times he does show up at the end of this game, I think it's strong. Right. Yes, yeah. version like nobody you. sees James except for Pop. Yeah, he's just sort of. So a, there's a hundred percent chance that he's a dead goat. It's very mysterious. Yeah, and it is most likely Fox is either cracking under the pressures of being a pilot because he's not good at being a pilot. Because he's not good at being a pilot, and apparently he's also the only hope that the Cornerian military has. Which that does not speak very highly of the Cornerian military. <laughs> if a private group of people is able to acquire such advanced technology that just completely dwarfs. Any? How do they have this advanced technology? I know, where did they get these things? Well, it's Slippy's dad. But so, he's in so, like... Is, is James also a trust no fund baby? You. Ooh. He's born into money. I admit I don't know. I don't know. There was some other important point. What was I going to make about Star Fox War? <laughs> Star Fox War. So much to cover. So uh, a few weeks ago, Emily Rogers, who's, who's one of the 
I don't know. She just might be the finest I Nintendo 64 or not Nintendo, journal, Nintendo journalist. Oh. Okay, it's kind of her specialty. She wrote about Sorry how she doesn't but think I'm there will hurt. be another Starbucks. And the reason why is that this is a hardcore franchise. Really? I mean, shooters, it's a real shooter. Shooters are, by definition, short-lived, oh, infinite re replayable, yeah. skill-based. They're geared High towards a challenge. High, yeah, and they're geared towards hardcore. They're not geared towards casual okay. pick up and play people. They're geared towards the people who love games Maybe and love skill. Okay. okay. And there just isn't a market for a hardcore, super intense shooter starring anthropomorphic <laughs> animals anymore. And it just it just feels like it wouldn't work in this gaming environment. And that just it seems like it's kind of. I mean, I think it all it's all a matter of expectation and scale on the project. Like I don't think, oh, yeah. I don't think you could get away with making a big budget like multi-million dollar Star Fox game. Okay. Then um, we agree with that. In that in in this style today. But I mean But like a 3DS maybe as a 3DS game yeah. or is it a loadable base title from the enemy or something army. where there's a reasonable expectation behind it and not millions of dollars and hundreds and hundreds of people. I would I would agree with that. Um, F Zero is the one that, that kind of scares me. Also, yeah, because that's old. F Zero is is even more hardcore. It really is. And uh, Nintendo doesn't doesn't love the hardcore always. <laughs> like because they, they want a game they, they, like uh, Donkey Kong Country. Sure. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is excellent, mm -hmm. and anyone well, can play it, and it's hard. It like is. it's it's the best of every world possible. <laughs> and Nintendo likes I those kind of games where like. Me. If you like games, you're gonna like this, as opposed to F Zero, where it's like if you like games and you're super intense, <laughs> uh, and you're a real extreme dude. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It Plus, was, I mean, Donkey Kong has the added bonus of everybody knows who Donkey Kong is. Oh yeah, and it's immediately recognizable as like a Donkey Kong game, whereas F Zero always kind of looked like a mishmash of like just a bunch of future stuff on a racetrack. And like a bunch of race cars and they're selling me. They're selling me. Besides Captain, like I guess people probably know Captain Falcon more so. I would imagine because of his Smash Brothers, in Smash Brothers, Definitely. and the Falcon Punch than they do from remembering him from F Zero. I mean, what are the other? I don't know. Like, what other F Zero characters do you think Get people can name? Off off the top of their head? Uh, James McCloud. James McCloud, <laughs> as we've discussed. That's it. Those are the only characters. Yeah. Is Waluigi in there? <laughs> So I would say your consent. Well, I'm not just trolls. I don't know. Time. We're, we'll we'll see. Honest. I mean, it was a very interesting editorial by Emily Rogers, who kind of who really knows her Nintendo hey, stuff. So when she says something Nintendo that I don't bait. like, yeah. but still agree with, it makes me scared. Can anyone Jeez! Um, Nintendo should just shock us by having it in like a Wii U. We we sunk we sunk all of our extra money into this Star Fox yeah. game. We're banking on this. They should show that off. Andros's enemy is my enemy. Do you want? Do you want to get to the interview? Bell and turn. That's what I need to see. No, not that interview. Oh. oh. So in the strategy Let's guide, right? Which I will hold above my face. In the strategy guide. With uh, Shigeru Miyamoto. Bow before the. He is the. Well, he's. I don't remember what he did Mr. in this Star game. Mr. Star Fox and stuff. Um, it's, he that? was the producer of Star Fox 64. <laughs> At the time. Okay, but yeah, no, we all uh, He was never been in charge of the Star Fox franchise, but he's, you know, he's Nintendo. He's not a Nintendo. Right. Right. Whatever. Whatever. He's made the best games ever. I think you've introduced Shigeru Miyamoto enough. I think you can just go straight. I actually didn't know what he did on this game. Oh, okay. So he, it's, got, it's got a lot of interview questions, which whatever. But it has stats. It's got his secret stats. Like he's a Playboy Playmater. Oh, well, we're gonna find out in the secret stats. We well, will. So it's got his birth date, and it's got where he was born. He's a Scorpio, and he he's 166 centimeters tall. Yeah, which is a weird thing. Imagine your mind's eye. Uh, he's ambidextrous. Really? Now, see, that one surprised me. I, I guess because, as well, it makes sense based on another hobby that he has that we'll learn about. Okay, so it says hobbies. Hobbies. Guitars. Who doesn't like guitars? And you can see that in the games because he made Wii Music and he made sports games. Mm -hmm. So there you go. His favorite game is Pac Man, which is a bad choice, but whatever. He likes noodles, he likes dogs, he has a family hamster, which is probably long since dead. Yeah. Long since dead. Well, you notice it says current pets. Current pets. Implying that that might not be around. And then the last category. Yeah. Hobbies. 
Oh, but wait a second, Tom. There's I thought we talked about that. So earlier his hobbies were guitar and sports. Uh huh. Those were good hobbies. Now at the bottom of the box it says hobbies. Uh huh. Family time. Whoa. Which is nice. That's a, that's a good hobby to have. It's to a good, be a good, time. good dad, good husband. And then guitar stuff. So if he got to that part and he was like, well, I've already, they've already asked me what my hobbies were once. I so it's just write the, the same thing now. down again, but this time talk about my family? So let, I'm going to assume for a second these are four different things. Okay. So he guitar, likes sports. Guitar practice, he likes sports, sports, sports and family time. And family time. He practices the guitar. Mm -hmm. What is guitar? <laughs> what is that hobby? It's just appreciation of guitar. Just, so he just kind of... Singular like, guitar! Know, this guitar's, guitar's alright. I'm liking it. Looking at it. Maybe give him a little polish. Also... Switch out the strings. Hey, I don't want to call... Shigeru Miyamoto a liar, so I will not. Shigs. I always refer to Shigs. Of course. So, in 2001... He's got some choice. That was a close call, call Bachman. In, in 2001, yeah. a game called Pikmin came out for the game. The Pikmin. And that You'll game was built on one of his main hobbies. Guitar. Oh, wait. He likes, he likes gardening, and that was built on right. gardening. Right. Yes. So, in 97, you would think that by that point, he was already thinking of... Pikmin, right? Because that game was probably in development for two years, so it probably started in 99, roughly, right? Presumably. So why isn't gardening one of the ones listed here? It's all part, it's stealth operation. He doesn't want to tip his hat as to what he's working on. So he's all just, oh, Reports guitars, family time. Maybe I'll make a, maybe people are, weapon. you know, they're sitting there and they're, they're scrutinizing it. Like, what is, what is Miyamoto into? He always makes games about his hobbies. What is he into now? Family time. But then I guess they made Animal Crossing. And he does. That is kind of a fan. He is not scared to say that his favorite animal is dog. Dog. And remember that Nintendogs. Nintendogs came out seven it years later. It all comes back. Uh, so my question is: Is does he, is he really a gardener? Ooh. How important is gardening to him if he mentions guitar twice and doesn't mention that at all? Would you? I mean, come on. Is it really more? Is family time really more important than gardening? Oh, no, definitely is it not. really worth mentioning? Definitely not. So this this is interesting. I also like the idea of somebody reading this, you know, however old you, I was 16 at the time. So I was a 16 year old Tom, reading this thing gardening on here <laughs> and going, maybe he should make a game where a little alien controls plant people. <laughs> and then somewhere, Scare Miyamoto got a shudder and he didn't know why. And then received the vision of the flux of past the after he fell off his toilet. Space oh God. up ahead. So apparently, All bombs. in September of 96, yeah. Shigeru Miyamoto talked about how Star Fox 64 is movie like. Oh yeah, he goes big into that. Though this is, this is like... Give me, give me some choice quotes, give me a choice hit. Oh God. What did he say that he will probably totally not regret now? It seems like a lot of a lot of game people seem to think the movies are superior for some reason, but you we don't think that at all. People? I'm a game people. All right. I don't consider movies superior, by the way. Okay. Uh, I might consider books superior. I really like books. They're pretty good. But movies, They've movies, been for a long movies while. are not a higher art form. Than Whoa! Games. All right. They're both they're both great at what they do. So he says that we can borrow ideas from movies. Just mm -hmm. weird thing should, should hear Miyamoto say this because. Nintendo usually is its own thing. They're, yeah. they're show games, they, and I love yeah, that. Yeah, they exist completely So outside. he says, we borrow dramatic camera movements okay. and the use of real-time voice. Voices. Real-time voices. Uh, so in Star Fox, we it's found... It's not like a ventriloquist where the voice comes out later. I know, we found that the movie gave us a fuller movie-like experience. Yeah, the overall experience was more movie-like. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, he does say movies are a passive experience and games are active. That is like the best and worst things about games, by the way. Yeah, is the control the player has to completely mess up whatever it is you're trying to well, convey meant, to them. I meant more just like when I'm at home and I'm like, you know, I work all day and I'm like, well, what do I want to do? And yeah. it's like, well, games require work. True. And sometimes games. I don't want to play games because it's like, it's a, it's an extra. There's a difference between doing something and not doing something. Movies, you're not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, you're just, just sitting absorbing. down and feeling things. Games you're like actively participating and it's, that's the best thing about them and that's also the worst thing when I'm lazy. I'm going ahead. I mean, I find that I, I don't mind, often I don't mind the act of playing the game so much, but I do, in recent years, I've come to mind more and more just, there's a lot of work that goes into making games work these days. 
compared to like Super Nintendo. You get your cartridge, you put it in the machine, you hit the button, it goes. Oh, yeah. When I fire my Xbox, gotta load the OS. Usually there's some sort of OS update that's mandatory. The game's gotta update. Oh, if you don't want the game to have super long load times, you'll also need to install it to the hard drive, but oh, your hard drive's full. So then which games do I want to delete? And there's just uh, first there's world problems, but I know. there's a lot of extra steps oh, these you. days. And then it just takes a long time for you know, game load and all the title cards got to come up and everybody's got to get the credit. Also, do you know the you theory... You can't just get into the game so quickly. Do you know the theory about like the first... I don't know, there's like 30 seconds of a YouTube video is worthless. Have you ever heard right, of that? Right, yeah, yeah, I have, I've heard that, that YouTube rule. So the beginning of so many games are now kind of worthless. <laughs> Whereas like Star Fox, you kind of, you start, and you start on the ground running. Like a minute, running. you just hit the button. Like if you don't yeah. want to watch, you can skip the opening, you can skip both opening cinematics. And within a minute, you just turn it on, hit start, hit start, and you're, and you're going. Yeah. You're in the game and you're blowing up shit. Because yesterday I was playing a little Mercenary Kings and there was like, this Metal Gear, uh, what is the conversation called in Metal Gear? Oh, no. Where there's the, uh, like you set the decimal number. Oh! What is that thing called? The, uh, now I can only, the codec, thank you. The, there's a codec. so calm. I was like, that's not what it's called. There's a codec conversation that was like not ending. And I was like, I really just want to shoot some dudes. But you need context for what you're doing. I really don't. I really don't need context. Huh? What? So now we sound grumpy. I know, now we're hating. But we also games love- are great. Well, the thing is, we play games because we love them. Yeah. Uh, if someone who doesn't love games says this, I'd be like, <laughs> Someone who's not a game people. Yeah, but I mean, just going around, it's weird when people kind of make games seem like they're a lazy thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's like the exact opposite. <laughs> like when you play Dark Souls 2, there's nothing lazy oh about my it. God. I'm like oh sweating. My God. <laughs> Hit him now! Oh, back up! Oh my god, I'm talking, I talk all the time to that game. It's a little weird. A little weird! Yo, things get thrown. Little things get thrown. Uh, so we have like five minutes left. Yeah. Before you have to leave. Yeah, spoiler alert for this for the next five minutes. So what? I have to bail. You have to bail. We're gonna do a work thing, and we're gonna switch out to a bonus mystery game. Very different game. Um, Very different game. So, this is the best Star Fox, right? It's really good. Um. I mean, Star Fox and Super Nintendo, a lot of people love that game more than well, this I'm asking, one. Well, I'm asking you. That's okay. In my opinion, I prefer 64. Why I, is it the best? So it's, it's compared to Command and it's compared to mm -hmm. Assault uh, and then Star Fox. There's only four real Star Fox games, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. So why is this the best? I mean, I feel, I mean, Star Fox and Super Nintendo gets bonus points for like doing it first. First game in that style, had that crazy 3D, you're yeah. like flying down the thing, it looks amazing. I feel 64 takes those lessons, does them better, gives you more variety, you've got more branching paths, different planets, all that good stuff. So I really like the variety and how well everything yeah. is executed in 64, which I don't feel is then as well executed in Command on the DS, because mm -hmm. they had a bunch of weird, just gimmicky stuff. A lot of weird game. stuff. Um, but we're gonna take a quick commercial break. I'm gonna switch out. We're gonna go to the bonus mystery game. Thank you guys for watching me yeah, anyway. That was um, fun. And be sure to come back later today, 2 p.m. Pacific, where Chris Waters will be playing some multiple players. Yes, he will. And I'm gonna ho unhook myself and we're gonna go to commercial break and we'll be right back. <laughs> yes. Hello everyone, I'm Tom McShay, I'm still here. Now hi. I'm joined by Carolyn Petty. <laughs> yes, hi. And we are no longer playing Star Fox 64. Instead we're playing one of two rare made N64 games that I've never played before. One of which is Donkey Kong 64. Oh, right, I've yes. never played that. I can't and believe this... you've never played that. We're gonna cut right to this yes. one. This Mickey's is the other one. Speedway USA. I've never played yes. this either. And in fact, I, I'm holding um, an N64 controller right now. I've not held one of these controllers in so long that it just feels weird in my hands because it's like I've forgotten how to how to hold this thing. How to hold it? Because it's such a it's such oh. a unique design. I wonder if this is two player. Oh, come on! It's a maybe not. And maybe yeah. This is this is. So it's, it has one controller there? Right, well, So what if I, I hit the blue button? Okay. No, I didn't do it right. Well, can it says you? one on you, so this, that implies that there should be a two. There I am. Oh, uh, there is a two. Okay. Uh, so this looks pretty good. So this, this game came out after Diddy Kong Racing, which is widely and correctly considered better than Mario Kart 64. Because it's better than okay. Mario Kart 64. Sure, yeah. So, like, how... I mean, this game's got to be pretty good, right? Uh, well, we're about to find out, I suppose. We'll just... I don't know what any yeah, of these Yeah, Traffic Troubles. Traffic Troubles sounds good. 
Uh, so, so Rare is your is like your favorite developer. They were my favorite developer yes. for years. Not and anymore. Years I mean, not yes. you're not you're not touting Connect Sports rivals or anything. Definitely there. not. <laughs> but but at this time, so how is it that this game um, slipped through your cracks? How did you never play this game before? Uh, it came out in 2000, and okay. in you may remember, yeah, on in September of '99, uh -huh. the Dreamcast. Came out. Okay, yeah, and that was kind of it for me. Yeah, like I, I probably played a couple other N64 games, but it's yeah. So I mean, there's the same thing with Donkey Kong Country six, or Don Donkey Kong 64. Right. And this, I just you know, once you play the Dreamcast, you don't want to go back. I just what did I just do? Like throw a baseball or something? I don't know what that weapon, what that item was. Seems legit. I, I always wondered why this game exists. Because why, it's like... Why wouldn't it exist? It's it's weird though, isn't it? I, well, how is it more weird than, uh, than you know, Mario Kart or Crash Team Racing? Well, because it's... Or it's a, it's, Star Wars Kart Racer. That's a thing? <laughs> oh, there's the Pod Racer. There was, well, the Pod Racer, yeah. Uh, it's just like, why is Rare doing this licensed game? Wait, isn't there a star? I have like this weird memory of like Darth Maul in a little cart, but is that a real game or is that just something that I'm making up? Anyway, never mind. We're here to talk about. That can't be real. We're here, we're here to talk about. Wait, wait, wait. No, we're gonna we're gonna keep talking about Darth Darth Maul. I don't know. I'm probably I'm probably making it up. I. Anyway, I, I honestly don't know. I don't want to. It might have been something that I dreamed about once. It sounds. I mean, that is a dream. Yes. So we uh we didn't do that great in the beginning. I mean, I I don't know how to get the boost yet. How do you get a boost? Did you figure that out? A boost? Um, I I think I did do a boost at one point. Um, I mean, I can do a little hop with the Z button, and that helped me like slide through turns. Yeah, I was um, I was getting that. I don't know if there's I don't know if there's like a I stick think there, there might back. be a there might yeah, what like is a that like shimmer effect. What is going on here? Because we started out and oh, of course Mickey wins. Yeah. Because we started out in like a house and I don't know I don't know what's, what the, <laughs> what, the, what the what's the story? Right. You need yeah sure you want context, Tom. You're very big on you want context. They totally your... are. So mm -hmm. so last week we we discovered that the Mario games take place on Earth. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, in this game, I, I was going to bring that up. Mickey Speedway USA. San Francisco! Right, our, our, our city here, San Francisco. What is this? This is, I mean, you know, they don't just live in Toontown. They live in, they live in the real world. They can, they can escape from the confines of Disneyland every once in a while. So at some point, nin Nintendo commissions, or Disney commissions, I don't know how it happened. Uh -huh. Rare. Yeah. To who's who's based in Tweecross, England, okay. which is the middle of nowhere in England, right? Sure. They commissioned them to make a game based on an iconic American cartoon figure. Yes, although I mean, to be fair, di the Disney brand is known and and beloved worldwide. But it is still it's an iconic American thing. Sure, certainly. That takes place in America. In America, yeah, on on the speedways of the USA. I have way more questions than answers. Let's just say that. Like, it doesn't make any logical sense. Why would Rare be making this game? Like, why Rare? Why didn't, like, I mean, no offense to well, like maybe, they, maybe they've proven themselves at, with um, with Diddy Kong Racing, right? They did prove themselves. So, you know, maybe they, they just seem like a natural uh, fit for, for a kart racer. Diddy Kong Racing came out, like, six months after Star Fox 64. Uh-huh. And this came out three years and six months after that. <laughs> yes. For some reason. But it just seems like... Because Left Field was one of Nintendo's developers during that era, and they made Excite Bike 64, which was great. Oh like, yeah. Why not commission them? Sure. Like sure. basically, the system is built on Rare, and this game's gonna sell the same no matter who makes it, because it's a licensed game. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Hindsight's 2020. Disney knew that Rare had a had a a reputation for producing quality games, wanted nothing but the best. Who knows. This is not a, a, a faithful uh, recreation of San Francisco, I have to say. Is it not? This is not the... It's, it's not, it's not, well... This, this it, doesn't game, have enough, it doesn't have enough homeless people. This game looks surprisingly bad, by the way. Well, it looks... You know what? It looks... Um, it, it looks just, like, fuzzy. It looks like the art would be really good if you could just peel back the, this like layer of fuzziness that seems to be covering everything. Like the colors are really kind of vibrant and, and beautiful and have this kind of like 
watercolor thing going on. I, I think it's, I, I think the color is very nice. I just think the, it's, it lacks definition. Hmm. My memory is that Diddy Kong Racing looks better, but I wonder if I'm just wrong. It might, yeah. Do you think they just had a small team and they kind of crapped this out? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I haven't. I I have to do some research. I, mean, I should. Uh, I don't, I'm I'm genuinely curious. Yeah. Like I don't. I wonder if this is a passion project for them or a uh, got to get paid project. <laughs> Those are the best projects, by the way. Yeah, got to yeah. get paid. Got to get paid projects. Yeah. And when I'm done with this stream, I'm probably gonna go and read the GameSpot review and see what. Yeah. Jeff Gersman or whoever whoever drew I, the short straw. We may have freelanced this one. Yeah, it might, it might not have been Jeff Gersman. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Or maybe it was. Maybe I'll just swing by his desk and talk about this while he tries to get rid of me. <laughs> that might be fun. That's one of your favorite things to do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Oh, hi, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, that's not true, but it totally could be true. It totally could be true. You could be like the obnoxious, like, sitcom, you know, neighbor. The neighbor, yeah. yeah. I'll be like Skippy from, uh... <laughs> from Family Ties. From fa you knew exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> I remember Skippy. Or Boners to Bone. That one I did. Growing Pains. Okay, yeah. No, I was not a, a Growing Pains viewer. So you already realized that Mike Seaver... Wait, not Mike Seaver. Who's the who's the actor? Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron. <laughs> you already realized that Kirk Cameron I, was. Uh, oh yeah, I already had it extreme. in. Extreme. Kirk, Kirk Cameron, yes. God. Actually, Kirk Cameron was the actor, the star of a uh, CD-ROM PC game that I rather liked when I was younger, called The Horde. It was like a strategy game with all these like full motion video sequences, and he was the he was the dude in it. So was that a passion project at first, or was he just <laughs> getting paid? I'm sure it was very much a passion project. He really believed in, in the horde. In the horde. In the horde. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so why? I mean, is is this is this game actually like maybe I should do a, a close critical analysis of this game? Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure it's mocking America because my weapon is a baseball. Right. I had the baseball. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Which has nothing to do with Disney, nothing no. to do with any of these characters. No. But it's America. It be, there should be baseball. There should also be like slices of apple pie that yes. you can like throw at your opponents. Do you think Rare is just mocking America? No, totally. They're just like, well. <laughs> I love old Rare. I don't know if I've mentioned this before. Even this game is making me love them. And this yeah, game's not it, that great. No. It's fine. It's, it's okay. fine. It's totally if fine. I, if I had rented this from Blockbuster, I probably would have thought it was good for, you know, a, a, a little bit of fun. Yeah, whatever. Oh, the Grand Canyon. You remember the Grand Canyon I have, from America? I, I, from, yes. From your time <laughs> you in may America. Remember. <laughs> Hi, I'm America. You may remember me from such places as the Grand Canyon in oh, nice. San Francisco. It's sometimes tough to know where I'm supposed to turn because the graphics yeah, aren't great. Yeah, uh, definitely. I've had that same problem. I think there's also, did, I think Rare also made the, like a sequel to this on the Game Boy. Really? I think so. Yeah. I haven't played all their Game Boy games, but uh, I do. I did. I did play all their console games until this Connect thing. Yeah. Until this Connect thing happened. Connect business. <laughs> yeah. I could basically do a live stream show of their old, old retro games, and it would be super fun. Mm -hmm. For you. It, they were so good. Oh, yeah, they made a lot of great games. They made a game, uh, I can't remember the other game. So they made a game called Saber Wolf so for the Sinclair, like, Spectre wow. Vision thing. Wow, So okay. okay, so this game was, like, so far ahead of its time, which makes sense, because that's what Rare did. They were cutting edge. Sure. That they then sat on it for, like, eight months and made the predecessor to it. Oh, weird. So they released the predecessor, which kind of let people build up to what this other game they already had made was. Oh, crazy. This is what happens when you have short development times and a bunch of people who are kind of brilliant Yeah. and sometimes too brilliant to actually make a game. <laughs> right. Yeah, they, they, they made, they were, yeah, they were amazing for like 30 years, which is longer than most developers have been around. Yeah. Ah, and it's then what happens? sad to see the, the rare name even put on some of the, their more recent projects. Yeah, I saw them referred to as like Microsoft Europe or Microsoft Tweetcross at one point, and I was like, yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah, they why should... don't we call them that instead of Rare? Because yeah. they, they've been dead in my eyes since, what, November 2008 when they released Banjo and uh, Viva Pinata? <laughs> right, that was the last hurrah. <laughs> that was a, that was a lot. It, was a, it was a hell of a hurrah. They both got 8.5 for Game Spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rain Cloud isn't super American, is it? 
That's what we have right now. <laughs> that's the item. Oh, I do have a rain cloud. There you go. Oh no, we're well, gonna rain so on me. This is like the. This is. Okay. Oh All god, right. and you're lightning. And thing? what is what inspired this item? I wonder. These items are complete garbage. They're not Disney at all. Huh. Yeah, this is fantastic. But whenever you pick up an item box that has a picture of Scrooge or something, I'm yeah. Wondering why for a second do we see some duck? I I don't even know which duck that is. Are you Daisy Duck? I am Daisy. And I'm Dewey, but not Huey or Louie. Well, no. This isn't this isn't the Mario Kart 8 of, I know. of uh, Disney cart games. It doesn't have all of the nephews in it. I mean, do you really need all of no, the... No, I think it has all the nephews. Oh, does it? Oh, so it is the Mario Kart 8 of Disney cart racing So now games. I have... What do I have now? What is my item? It's a bubble, which I don't really know what the point of it is. It, just, it seems like to just be a protective shield or something. I can't uh, use it right now? Uh, maybe because you're being thunderstormed. Oh, I didn't get a chance to use it. Wait, so when you finished, did it just finish for both of us? I guess because you're the you're last place, right? So so you then. There's only four racers. Yeah, yes, it's only four four racers. Why are there only four racers? Is it because it's two player? Uh, I don't. We, there should we can be try, more than that. You can we can try a single player race. We're gonna, see if there's we'll like try a eight. different mode. There might be a battle mode. Yeah. Oh. I know. Also, we have to figure out why this game is rated M. <laughs> we have to do some, some digging. So Mickey, of course. Yeah, just, oh, it's, the math, just, there's no way anyone can catch up to him at this point. Oh my god. Are we done? Can we back out? Can we? Or is there one more? There might be more than one more. Oh, no, that's okay. it. Okay, we're done with traffic troubles. Motorway mania. What else we got? No, we're gonna do motorway mania. Oh, okay. I thought you might want to see if there was like a battle mode. Oh, in Perfect. Per per Not even these names have anything to do with Disney. Like, shouldn't it be like Duckling or? Wow, Los Angeles. Oh my God. So what's different about this mode? Uh, well, that remains to be seen. Oh, I burned out. I hit, I hit the accelerator too soon. So what are you picking up when you're picking up items? They look so like monkeys are... in a barrel. Uh, right, right, yeah. Is that what they are? Oh, I don't know. Because that's also nothing to do with Disney. <laughs> I kind of love this game now. Yeah. The more I play it, the more baffling it is. And I love that, like, because normally in these games, it'll, like, cycle through really quickly all the items and then stop on whatever. Sure. And it just, it just shows a picture of an old <laughs> duck man. <laughs> like, what is that? It's just, it's just like, here it is. <laughs> Hang on. I'll just show you what you got in just a second. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Here it comes. Monkeys in a barrel. That's totally what that is. Uh, like, I love the idea of Rare's, like, almost done, and they send it to Disney for approval, sweet. and Disney's like, uh, needs more Disney stuff. How about you put Old Man Duck on here? That'll do it. Man. Yeah, if this game was made today, yeah. it would be iOS exclusive. Oh, please. It would. Sure. And it would probably have in-app purchases. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then the, the developers would say it's not geared towards kids. Why am I looking back? Is that it? Is the race over? Yeah. What happened? That was it. okay. So these are like shorter races or something. That felt short to me. Feels pretty long to me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, rare. Yeah. Sorry, rare. So there, in the most recent episode, there's an NPR podcast called um, Radio Lab. Yeah, Radio Lab, sure. Which I, which is brilliant. So this last episode was about a DJ, a white DJ, which is important. Okay. From New York, calling out um, Nicki Minaj. Yeah. For this ocean song or okay. sunshine song, but either way, it's like she's a rapper, she's yeah. hip hop. Yeah. She's really good at that, and this okay. song is like pure Katy Perry pop. Okay. And so, my wife and I were talking about like, is it cool to call someone out like this? And my first reaction was, yes, because that's what I do with Rare all the time. Okay. And I wanted to defend my own thing. Sure. Because I was like, basically, she, like Rare, turned their back on, on what they did, which is do. Oh. And then okay. and then you get mad. And even if they're doing stuff that's good, because the pop song sounded, it sounded like a pretty good pop song. Sure. And like the Connect Sports, they're pretty good. People like them. They sell well, right? I, mean, I guess they sell well. They sell well. Yeah. So it's like they still have success, yeah. but you want them to do something but I mean, that's not crap. But I mean, I, I don't think you can say that there's like inherently less value in... I mean, I don't know the details of this story, but you can't say that there's like inherently less value in 
pop music than there is in rap or hip hop, right? I mean... Well, the idea is that like, so hip hop was part of a certain culture, Latino and, sure. and, and African American oh. primarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now that it's popular, it's been taken over by the record labels, sure. by even the audience, but from white people. Yeah. And it's kind of changed what it was to something more palatable. Okay. Um, right. Definitely. Which is which is a certain yeah, it's, it's interesting kind of, thing. Yeah, definitely. So I don't know. I mean, I'd recommend listening to it, but it just like because my wife didn't like how harsh she was, basically, mm. and I was like, this is. Sometimes that's kind of what you have to do, is you have to call them out yeah, on that sure. kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't know enough about this specific yeah. situation, but I'm definitely in favor of people calling other people out. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, tweeted a link to a... So Patrick Klepek of Giant Bomb just posted on his Tumblr a uh, kind of little comprehensive roundup of reactions to the aesthetic of loof trousers. And, is and that how you pronounce it? That's how I pronounce I it. I thought it was Loop Browsers. Loop, whatever it is. Okay. And um, and then some people saying, well, you know, this game kind of uh, traffics in like Nazi imagery, you know, for fun. Yep. And uh, and th that the developers very graciously responded to a lot to these criticisms, to you know, saying, well, that interpretation is, you know, when you create something and you put it out into the world. You know, we as the creators cannot dictate how people will interpret it, and that is a valid, you know, interpretation, a valid criticism, and you know, just being very gracious and understanding that criticism is not censorship. You know, which is like what so often uh, things, reactions come down to of like, oh well, you know, if you criticize this, I mean, just people equating criticism with censorship in ways that are kind yeah. of silly. And, and so I think you know, one of the best things about this story is the fact that the the creator on, you know, the, re the person responding from Vlambeer was so gracious and so kind of, you know, receptive to the criticisms of these of these people who had taken issue with the game's aesthetic. Yeah, I saw the story break this weekend, but I didn't actually read anything yet. So basically the game, like, what's the problem? Uh, again, so I've actually not played with Trousers myself, but some people feel... I don't even know if I'm going. I don't know which way. I'm wrong way. Okay. I was wrong way all of last race. <laughs> and you were in first uh, last race. Okay. Here we go. Um, what? I seriously. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that just the, the that it sort of uncritically, you know, uses a kind of Nazi, sort of maybe Nazi propaganda style image, imagery. Uh, or so, something along those lines. So it uses it without saying the Nazis are bad, basically. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it kind of, in a sense, yeah, yeah. Like, you are, yeah, I, I, I don't want to say something that might be wrong. I, I need to look at the story more closely, but okay. I think that, um, again, Patrick Klepek's sort of deal, dealing with this, or rounding, it, rounding up the issue on his Tumblr is, uh, is really good, really okay. a, good, a good read. That's, uh, Patrick does some interesting things. Yeah, I like Patrick's stuff a lot. Yeah. He's a social justice warrior. Oh, <laughs> uh. So I think it's funny, like, this game. Uh-huh. Uh, this game's not that great, right? I mean, it's, is... it's fine. It's a, it's a middling kart racer. It's still making me so miss Rare. Yeah. Even, like, the crappy stuff they did is making me miss Rare. Yeah. Ah... Uh. I really think both Microsoft and Nintendo were hurt by that sale. And Rare. Oh, for sure Rare. Yeah, Nintendo... Well, Microsoft spent a ton of money on a developer that was not for them at all. Right, exactly. And they and now they've, they've you know, they're not taking advantage of what Rare's strengths were yeah. in these projects that they've now put Rare on. I mean... And then know. Nintendo does not have their right-hand man anymore. Mm -hmm. They need a developer that they can rely on to release a really good game that sells every year, and they don't have that. And they haven't had that for years, and both I the mean, Wii and the Wii U were it, hurt from that. Is Retro kind of filling, retro, the, filling those you, shoes? You'd think it would, but they've released four games yeah. in their existence. No, they're very... Five games in their they're, existence. They're definitely not as prolific yeah. as Rare was, that's for sure. So, I mean, they... But the games that they have put out are, are, amazing. are amazing. Generally. Yeah. I don't like corruption. No, I know. But they made four amazing games, which is not which is not bad, 80%. But yeah, like it's rare. Nintendo would be better off with Rare. Rare would be better off than Nintendo. Microsoft <laughs> would be better off with whatever they do. 
<laughs> so that was, that was like one of those sales where everybody lost. So sad. Uh, I keep losing the I'm losing sight of which way I'm supposed to be going. Yeah, there's not arrows. Like not, sometimes not I'm just as, like I mean there so these there are these like fuzzy yellow things on the ground, I think. I don't know, it's it's difficult to tell. Oh I couldn't even figure out the exit of this of this hangar. <laughs> there it is. I saw you going the, the other, other way. way. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're just like so long, mm -hmm. Sugger. You know, I don't think the whole time I've been playing this. It's always been like the two AI racers in the front and then you with me in the back. Like, yeah. how do you, how do you ever compete with the AI racers? Like, what do you have to do to be good to catch up to them? We should have played on Duckling <laughs> or something. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think of, of three different difficulties that would fit within the Disney universe. Uh. How about Mulan? Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, well, the Mul be... Mulan's the hardest. Right, okay, good. Okay. okay. We're, War we're a warrior right. woman, of course, it's the hardest. Uh, Belle will be the second hardest because yeah. she's super smart. Yeah. And the easiest. Oh, God. Now we're going to talk about who's the easiest Disney princess because that no, is no, an no, awkward. No. <laughs> it's an awkward category. Oh, my. Oh, you. Well, okay. Fun. Ariel's an idiot because she gave her voice. Like, that's not good. Right? I mean, I, I, I think idiot's a little harsh, but she doesn't always exercise the best judgment. I remember the last time I saw that movie, not only is it not a good movie, but I was having trouble with her as well. I was shocked at how that movie doesn't hold up, by the huh. way. It's like 70 minutes. I mean, the songs are so the good. The songs are amazing. The songs are so good. See, that's what's good about that movie, basically. I don't know, we're gonna make Ariel the easiest one, unless you can think No, of. I'm, fine, I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. Okay. It gets it gets much better after her. <laughs> yeah, but but that movie was important because it sort of ushered in the new golden age of Disney animated films. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like Ariel is the kind of woman I'd be I would have been before I got married, like embarrassed to introduce to people. Uh huh. Whereas Belle and yeah. Mulan. Yeah, well, no, you'd, be, yeah. you'd be like you'd be like no, this Wait. is <laughs> <laughs> my AI Daisy just kept like banging into the wall. We're so bad at this game. Uh, We're so bad. <clears throat> Didn't Disney just like shut down their development team? Their gaming team? Isn't, isn't that I don't know. I mean, there's like, a, there's like a 3DS um, Disneyland game, I think, that just came out or is coming out. I love how our goal is to go to Old Man Duck. That's, yeah. <laughs> Who's like up there somewhere and I don't know. Okay, so we have time to do... Oh, freeway, freeway phobia. Is that, I actually oh, there's suck. other ones. Then we can do the, the battle mode, the versus, wait, what's the c contest? Options. Options. So there's traffic troubles. Yeah, motorway mania, we did. Freeway phobia, which is probably just another set of tracks. Vict whatever, victory vehicles, or there's versus. Is this battle mode? It sounds like a battle mode. Or is it a one-on-one -on -one race? Oh, that would not be exciting. Oh, here we go. It's a one-on-one -on -one race. I think Alaska. We haven't been to Alaska yet. So we'll, we'll we'll go to vehicle one and see what that is. Okay. There has to be a battle mode. Every, every one of these games sticks battle mode. Well, maybe it isn't. Okay, I guess it's, we're gonna do another GP for until until we're until done. Until we're out of time. Ah, uh, Yellowstone. I like Jellystone. Yeah, that's another animated series, though. What about my villains? Who's the dumbest villain? Oh my god. Who would be the easiest villain? Gaston. Gaston's an idiot, right? Gaston would be the easiest villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who's, like, the most conniving? Most, yeah. Oh, man. I mean, Ursula's pretty conniving. Um, she lost, like, a boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that good. Yeah. Is Jafar that good? Jafar's, I mean, he's certainly he's certainly conniving, right? Well, yeah, like, he's... what Disney villain came closest to, like, you thought they were actually going to win? Oh. <laughs> the I mean, fire maybe, from to Toy Story 3. Maybe, like, uh, the evil queen from Snow White, you know? Oh, yeah, she was good. She yeah. might be the she might be the hard difficulty. Yeah. And then maybe the furnace from Toy Story 3. Oh my god, so terrifying. We're just trying to help fix this game retroactively. Maybe this will be the next franchise that, that Retro takes over. Oh yeah. Since they did the rare Donkey Kong. 
Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> the rare Mickey Speedway USA for Oh my time. god. Speaking of rare, there's a very strong rumor that there's gonna be a new Battletoads at E3. Are you serious? Yeah. That's, I mean, well, it's probably would just be like a downloadable game, right? Not like a big Can AAA Can you imagine race. a $60 game with stupid <laughs> battles Toads fighting? <laughs> well, if it were Battletoads and Double Dragon, then I feel like I was getting my $60 worth out of it. I would love it if, I mean, the problem is, like, I only want a 2D Battletoads. I don't want anything beyond what Battletoads was. Sure. Yeah, so that's why I'm thinking a downloadable, a downloadable game. Hopefully not quite as impossible as Battletoads on the NES. That third level. That speed tunnel was amazing. I liked that game. I only won it though with the, with the Game Genie, because whatever. Who was I trying to impress? I was 10 years old. Washington, D.C. So there's the fountain. Yeah. Woohoo! Oh my god, I'm actually in second. I'm not. Okay, now I'm in third. I'm just in first. I'm in first. You actually got first in that one track. I did. Yeah, I guess I did, didn't I? I don't think I've ever gotten higher than. Fourth. <laughs> oh my god, these graphics are so fuzzy and and muddy and... This didn't... feels like the worst what, uh, what the N64 was. Because people always say that it was like lots of fog and fuzzy. Yeah. But it wasn't It wasn't in reality like this. No. At least I don't think so. Well, we just played Star Fox 64 and that looked way better than this. Yeah. But then, I mean, that was... Space. I know. Space probably easier to deal with than, you know, Washington, D.C. Uh, they were ambitious. Yeah. It's a game we could say is ambitious. Yeah. We'll see what uh, what Joe Fielder, who, I'm really wondering who reviewed this. <laughs> it's been Joe Fielder, yeah. We're going to look it up. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm very curious now to see what where the GameSpot review came down in this game. I'm gonna say it was like a seven, we, we had everything, right? So seven, three. Yeah, yeah, it could be seven, three. What, you're just agreeing? No, I said, okay, no, I'm, I'm agreeing that it could be a seven, three. Oh, um, uh, ah, Benito! Benito told us it was a seven, Se five. Seven, five. Seven, you, were, you were really close. I know my rare and I know my, is it Joe Fielder? <laughs> oh, oh my God, I got a God. six, six! So this game, who? Jeff Gersman gave Diddy Kong a 6-6, six, six, so maybe I'll talk to him after this stream. Who reviewed this? Okay. Shane Satterfield, okay, he was a, he was a game Shane Shatterfield Shane Satterfield was like the head yeah. of game trailers. Yeah, he for went like, to, yeah. He, he left last year, I think it was. But Shane Satterfield liked this game mm -hmm. more, more than, than Jeff Gersman liked Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna have a little talk with Jeff. Yeah, um, better pencil that And this in. is probably a good time because we're, our stream is over now. Okay. Uh, this was a really interesting stream because we, we do dove into some weird Disney stuff. And yes, definitely some weird Disney stuff. And Max and I dove into some esoteric Star Fox stuff, which yeah. was also fun. So uh, thanks for watching. Next week, I think Peter Brown's back. Yes, he'll be back. And if you tune in at 2 p.m. today, we have multiple, multiple players. Multiple players, yeah. Hosted by Chris Waters. They're yes. playing an eight-player Xbox One game. Right. Um, so tune in for that. That should be fun. Yeah. Uh, and thanks for watching.